Yakutsk is possibly the coldest city in the world, located on permanent permafrost in Russia, getting to temperatures as cold as negative 64 degrees Celsius and negative 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Somehow, the Saka people walk in this weather. One of the traditional foods of the Saka people here is to catch fish and then throw them on the ground to freeze. They'll carve it up and eat the frozen strips. This is called stroganina. They also preserve berries by freezing them, and they can also rely on and eat every other part of their horses, from the liver to the other meats. And they use horse milk in cheeses, yogurts, and whipped creams, and even cream soups. In my fantasy world, Lucea, the northern city-state of Nova Thule receives almost no sun year-round on account of it being located under another continent, so it too is extremely cold. Originally, I thought, we'll just have them eat a mountainous-based barley diet, and then the rheumatoids can supply the rest. Rheumatoids are basically llamas adapted for the ultra-cold environments with big noses that heat the air before it gets into their system. But when I learned about Saka foods, I wanted to include more frozen things like fish, berries, honey, and meat, so they have a wider variety of flavors. Humans always love more flavors. But I also learned the importance of proteins and fatty dairy products, because these sorts of food keep the Saka people warm. But in learning about Yakuts, Yakusha, and the Saka people, it made me realize that water is also a delicacy, because they can't pump it in through their plumbing in the winter. It would freeze, so they have to melt it from ice blocks that they've carved earlier in the year. And now, I'm not really sure how I want to handle water in my world. Seeing this, it really made me realize how much climate impacts culture, and so if you don't live in that climate, it can be really hard to imagine everything by yourself. So don't be afraid to try to do research and explore new things. This is just one example of how you can find the inspiration to make your culture feel more grounded and realistic in your fantasy world. Having grounded and realistic cultures like that just makes your writing feel all that much richer. Subscribe for more World Building Wednesdays, and I'll see you all next time!